This is my presentation. I'm here to talk to you all about raising your game. Throughout my whole football career, the only thing our manager, or my managers, I had about five or six of them, was constantly on to us guys was about raising the game. And I think we, in this room today, every single one of us, wants to raise our game. We don't necessarily want to become multi-millionaires or Richard Branson's. We just want to raise our game and do a little bit better. And often the way we do a little bit better is by learning from others and hearing other people's stories. So this is all it is. This is my story. I will introduce myself. Yes, I did play professional football for uh, Bolton, Burnley, England under 23. I did not play for the full England squad. Uh, my manager, Jimmy Adamson, at Burnley said two things stop me playing for the full England team. Skill and ability. But there you go. <laughs> but there you go. I nearly got there. I had a reasonable career during my football career. I didn't used to play golf in the afternoon. I didn't used to play snooker. I used to think about my future. I knew it would only last 12 years. I, last, I played for 16 years. My football career lasted longer than most. So I, I tried my hand in business. I had a printing business. I had a kitchen center. I had a removals business. I had an advertising business. I was the most consistent business person in Lancashire. Everyone failed. Every business I had failed. And sometimes I would do a presentation like this and people say, how can you come talk to us when all your businesses have failed? But the key to it all is we must be able to take the risks. And I bet there's a lot of us in this room today where our businesses have failed and you've learned from taking those risks and you've learned from those failures to allow you to move forward to success. So don't ever think that failure is not part of success. It is an integral part. Don't ever, ever be scared of failure. It's an integral part of success. Going into business when you're 32 and you know how to take penalties and you know how to take free kicks and corners is not much good for you. So all I could home in on was this attitude thing. So I homed in on my attitude and I picked up a great tip. And I've been sharing it and Jim somewhere in the room and I shared this at a conference in Manchester not long ago and it worked. Jim came and he told me about the, uh, about how the effect he's had on his workforce. And I just want you to try it. How do you respond when people ask how are you? Don't ever underestimate this. This is often the first glimpse people will have of your attitude. And many people, myself included, used to copy others. You'll hear somebody say something, so you'll copy it. How are you, Bill? Oh, fur to middling, how are you? I'm fur to middling, everybody's fur to middling. Right? We, you, cannot be fur to middling. When anybody says, for one week, how are you? You're just simply going to say, Magnificent. I will try it. How are you? Magnificent. Oh, Christ. With a bit more passion. How are you? Magnificent. Right. Initially, people say, on drugs. Right. Don't worry. But just say that and don't say anything else. On over a period of time, people will start to comment about your magnificence. So you can see. And this is what happened. Can you believe 67,000 people once crammed into that ground? to watch a game of football. So these, these were the old stadiums. Um, this is probably more typical of, the, uh, of Leeds Road Stadium. And the bad wire fence is to keep the fans in. <laughs> so this is what football was like. But we did have an opportunity. Somebody once said, in every difficulty lies opportunity. In every difficulty lies opportunity. If you look deep enough. And this was the opportunity. Uh, it was reported in the Huddersfield Examiner. Within a seven iron of the Huddersfield ground lay this beautiful piece of land that was just sat there waiting for a new stadium. Now, my philosophy is start right at the top, right? So I said to my daughter, Claire, who is the biggest, in 1995 this, who is the biggest band in the world? What is the most famous band? Because if you start there, you can always make your way down. Start off with the crankies, it's hard making your way up that. So he, she said it's a group called R.E.M. They are the biggest band in the world in 1995. So... I got the yellow pages out, went through some agents, made about 10 phone calls and found out that they had an agent in London called Ken Gold. We went down to see him. And incredibly, and how often does this happen? We walked into this guy's office and we said, you own the biggest band in the world. Would you like to come and play at our new stadium at Huddersfield? And he said, of course we would. Nobody ever asks. They always start at the bottom and make the way up. Nobody ever knocks on my door and says, will you come and play at our venue? They Whilst we're running our businesses and working for companies, we're all running this, me limited. We all run a me limited business. 
where we are the chief cook, the bottle washer, the marketing, the accounts department. We look after our wives, our families, our husbands, our kids. And that is an important part of our business. And we have to be careful on that balance. But whilst we're doing the me business, we have to be careful that we don't get wrapped up in many other things.